The Lord be with you, dear friends in Christ. And on this day, this Thursday, as we approach opportunity for weekend and worship once again, I, uh, I pray that the Lord is blessing you through this season of Advent and our consideration of the coming of Christ and the blessing that, that everything we can do and everything that, that we can decorate and sing and even maybe even eat and enjoy and write and hear and so on, it all just adds to the celebration of the coming of Christ. And, and we get to, to be reminded in the midst of all of the birthday celebrating, to, re, to be reminded of the purpose of Christ as our devotion for today is entitled, Hanged on a Tree. Hanged on a Tree. For our Advent prop today, I brought a, a Christmas piece, a decoration that I have here in my study. Right now, you may recall that this is uh, over on the table with all of the chocolate that is there and uh, available to you as well. But four different styles of Christmas tree here, and there are bells hanged on these trees, hung on these trees, and just a, a little bit of a, of a decoration of a reminder of that which the story I heard, the, the information I have, is that Martin Luther was the first to bring a tree into the home and decorate that as a reminder of Christ coming in the world. Maybe those of you uh, who are aware of this, of an old, old tradition, r before there were plug-in lights, there were actually candles that were placed on trees. Wow, talk about a fire hazard. Anyway, but it's Luther who is credited with uh, starting this idea of Christmas tree, oh, Tannenbaum, uh, the way that we have every aspect of our tree being reminded of us, of, of Jesus in some way or another. And so our sanctuary is adorned once again with lights and with the chrismons, the Christ monograms, the symbols of Jesus, of God, of the gospel, of our salvation in Christ. And so the star on the top of it, the star that guided the wise men, the lights that Jesus is the light of the world, the greenness of the tree that reminds us of the life that is in Jesus, the life that is eternal. But I also want to have you again point to, we are pointed to the purpose of Christ on that tree as well. And so I invite you to listen to Galatians chapter 3. This is verses 13 and 14. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law F by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. So that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. So in the midst of all of the beautiful Christmas trees that we see around us that we've worked hard in placing and decorating and pulling out again and, and reviving that wonderful and rich tradition, we're reminded of another tree. In the midst of all the lights and life that a Christmas tree can put before our eyes, we are reminded of a dark tree, a death tree, that the cross was for Jesus. And it was for him because it was for us in our place. It bears repeating this time of year and always. What Jesus was doing on the cross, on that tree, on Good Friday wasn't for himself, it was for you and for me. It was in our place as our substitute. The tree of the cross is for us, is our fault. And it is there that Christ pays the price, redeems us, and gives us forgiveness for all of our sins. 
O Christmas tree, O Christmas tree, how lovely are your branches. And that is because Christ died, Christ rose, and Christ is coming again. And so now we have life indeed, and now we celebrate indeed that Christ is the Savior. And that he became that curse for us so that you and I would know his presence, his grace, the power of his spirit living in us through his word. God bless you this day. And God bless your weekend and worship as you are drawn closer and given the gifts of Christ in his word this week. We pray. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you became that curse for us. And rising from the dead, you have given victory and unity and redemption to us. Bless us as we live that out every day and as we celebrate that in this year, this time of year. Lord, we pray this in your name. Amen. I look forward to being with you again, Lord willing, next week.